What's up little green nerds, Beefy here, and today we're going to talk about the set of maneuvers that your instructors probably dread the most. So what terrifying set of maneuvers would elicit such a reaction from the brave and fearless instructor corps? Well, that maneuver is slow flight. Today we're going to talk about why even bother with slow flight and some of the theory behind flying it, maneuver setup, execution of all the scat safe maneuvers, and common student errors. For your courtesy disclaimer, some of the aspects of this video, such as block altitudes, will be specific to Vance Air Force Base. If you're not stationed in nowhere, Oklahoma, reference your local pubs. Similarly, these maneuvers and their parameters are specific to the T6 Alpha, so if you attempt these maneuvers as described in something that's not a T6 Alpha, make sure to record it. That might be the difference between violating technical orders and making it a science experiment. So getting back to the subject at hand, slow flight. What the heck is the point? Well. The requirement to land the aircraft during your flight is something of a physical inevitability. During the landing phase, you'll be approaching speeds very close to stall prior to touchdown. And while you'll still be flying, it'll be at very high angle of attack, which causes flight characteristics of the aircraft to behave slightly differently than they do at, say, 200 knots. Different how, you might or honestly might not ask. Well, high AOA means that the angle between the air moving past our aircraft, the free air stream, and the mean cord line of the wing is high. This high AOA causes a large amount of lifties as you approach critical AOA, but also causes a lot of draggies due to this part of aerodynamic theory called induced drag. Induced drag is drag caused by redirecting air in order to produce lift. More specifically, but not too specifically, a wing producing lift creates vortices along its trailing edge. These vortices ultimately redirect airflow so you get a net effective airflow vector somewhere in between your mean cord line and relative wind. Effective lift is a vector that's perpendicular to this effective airflow, and if you break down effective lift into its horizontal and vertical vectors relative to the free air stream... Wait a minute... That horizontal component of effective lift is backwards! And that's actually not a big deal. That backwards horizontal component of effective lift is your induced drag. So as you can probably now see as a result of all this nerd crap, a change in pitch at these low airspeeds and high AOA has the net effect of increasing the amount of induced drag on the aircraft and decreasing the vertical component of effective lift. And this whole spiel that took like six hours to animate was ultimately meant to explain to you that if you pitch the nose up or down in slow flight, you'll speed up or slow down pretty effectively, but you'll find you won't climb or descend as much. On the other hand, and I'm just not going to draw this out again, adding power will decrease the angle of effective airflow to the mean cord line, increasing the vertical lifty part of effective lift without changing induced drag. This means that power has a larger impact on altitude than it does on your airspeed in slow flight. This regime of flight where pitch affects your airspeed and power affects your altitude is known as the backside of the power curve. Anyway, ultimately the point of slow flight and the sub-maneuvers hereafter described are to demonstrate the changes in flight characteristics at low airspeeds so you know how to properly react between the time when you done goofed and the time that that goof has precipitated into paperwork. So, much like some other maneuvers in the MOA, training rules do apply, as benign as slow flight is. Make sure you're at least 6,000 feet AGL, you can maintain clear of clouds during the maneuver, you have at least three statute miles of visibility, and a discernible horizon. So for setup and parameters, you have a few options. Flaps up, flaps takeoff, and flaps landing. If you choose to do flaps up, about 25% torque is a good power setting to start at when establishing level flight to maintain 90 to 95 knots. If your flaps are in takeoff, about 30% is a good power setting to start to maintain 85 to 90 knots. And if your flaps are in landing, about 40% is a good place to start to maintain 80 to 85 knots. You're going to have to use your brain here. These numbers are just a place to start, and based on fuel conditions, altitude, temperature, you're, you're probably going to have to change them to maintain level flight. For setup, my favorite technique is to set my power for what slow flight would be, and pitch up or down, usually up, to slow it to that airspeed. As you can see, it's pretty much just adding a vertical component to the maneuvering you'd normally do to set up in the MOA. I'll configure to my brief parameters when I'm below 150 knots, and trim the aircraft off for straight and level flight. Make sure you confirm your gear after doing so. Excuse me, I just gotta fast forward here for a second. So 
where the heck in the moa are we well it looks like right now we're at 9900 feet because i'm lazy but most ips would recommend you fly a more logical altitude like 9500 or 10,000 feet over the course of the maneuver, you'll be expected to maintain plus or minus 150 feet, with some exceptions for the sub-exercises that are not practical to do that with. The different maneuvers that make up the spectrum of slow flight form the acronym SCATSAFE. When you do slow flight in the MOA, you'll be expected to do at least two maneuvers from the SCATSAFE list. The first maneuver is straight and level, which I personally think is cheating because nobody enters slow flight at 90 degrees of bank. When you're within the airspeed range commiserate with your flap setting and flying in a relatively straight line, congratulations, you've... you did it. You'll probably notice that you run out of right rudder trim. Don't panic. Just use your feet to center the rudder ball. The next maneuver is the coordination exercise. Again, this is a fairly simple maneuver. Uh, you pick a heading about 45 degrees off the nose and use 15 to 20 degrees of bank to get to that heading. You'll notice that you need more rudder when banking to the right than to the left because of the effects of torque from the prop. I'm honestly not sure how to make this segment more exciting. After rolling out on your desired heading, return to your original heading using the same 15 to 20 degrees of bank and coordinating with the rudder. The first A in SCAT SAFE stands for Adverse Yaw. This demonstrates the plane's tendency to weave back and forth when initiating and terminating turns if you don't coordinate with rudder. Start the exercise by rapidly rolling into bank either right or left. In this case I go left, but it doesn't really matter. After about 20 degrees of turn, rapidly roll the wings level, which I kinda do a bad job of here. I'll reshoot that footage and re-upload it for a future update. You'll notice if you went to the left first that the nose wants to continue to track past your intended point of rollout. Now, do the same thing to the right. While it's not super obvious in the video using outside references, if you look at the rudder ball you'll see that the nose clearly yaws to the left. Repeat this exercise with coordinated rudder and be happy because you've made the aircraft behave more professionally. After that is torque and turns. This demonstrates how torque will pull the nose up and roll the aircraft to the left if you don't maintain positive control whilst doing a touch and go or a go around. To demonstrate this, from straight and level slow flight, rapidly set max power and release the flight controls. Now that doesn't mean completely let go and put your hands in the air, it just means relax your grip and let the aircraft track where it wants to track. As you can see, the nose tracks very rapidly up and to the left. Please make a point to resume positive control before the aircraft stalls or departs controlled flight. Do this exercise one more time, but maintain more positive control with the stick and rudder in order to coordinate a climb with the spinner on the horizon, similar to what you'd do after a touch and go or a go around. The second S in SCAT SAFE stands for steep turns. This demonstrates the danger of high angles of bank at low airspeeds. From straight and level slow flight, begin to increase your bank toward 60 degrees while adding power and backstick pressure to maintain level flight. As you can imagine, you won't be able to maintain level flight for very long. You'll notice it appears that the wingtip closest to the ground seems to pivot around a point. Inside the cockpit, you'll notice that AOA seems to be rapidly increasing towards a stall. To recover from the impending stall, just roll out a bank. Rolling out a bank is the fastest way to increase lift in a situation where you can't rapidly increase airspeed. The second A stands for Abrupt Control Movement. This simulates late recognition of the need to flare, not like that ever happens, often leading to students hurriedly snatching the stick. From straight and level slow flight, rapidly pitch the nose up to 20 degrees nose high. You'll notice several things. 
from left to right, you'll see AOA rapidly approach a full stall. You'll see airspeed decreasing rapidly, because again, our pitch contributes more to induced drag at this point than lift. You may see your VSI increase temporarily, but it won't for long, and your airspeed will generally not be increasing. You may feel buffet as you approach high AOA. Relax the nose or simply do your stall recovery procedures prior to actually stalling the aircraft. The letter F is for flap retraction. Flap retraction demonstrates that reconfiguring the flaps prior to recommended airspeeds causes the aircraft to lose lifties and develop a sink rate, which can be dangerous during critical phases of flight. From a straight and level slow flight, move the flaps to the up position. Increase your pitch in order to maintain your altitude. You'll initially see airspeed increase because of the reduction in drag, then decrease as induced drag increases from the increase in pitch. AOA will increase towards a stall. The 11248 says, AOA increases and a stall results, but don't actually let the aircraft do that because the Dash 1 says please don't stall with the gear and the flaps down, it's bad. Recover prior to the stall by moving the flap lever to the landing position. You'll feel the aircraft ballooning from the increase in lift, and AOA will decrease. Airspeed will decrease because of the increase in drag and your low power setting. Finally, E is for effectiveness of controls. This exercise demonstrates that at low airspeeds, rapid control movements aren't deflecting enough air for long enough to get the desired change from the aircraft. From straight and level slow flight, rapidly move the stick fore and aft, then left and right. Notice the perceived mushiness of the controls. You'll see that when deflecting the ailerons, there's very little heading change, and pitch does very little for sink rate or altitude change. Be very gentle with the rudder if you're going to manipulate that particular control surface. So as previously mentioned, you don't have to do every single scat safe maneuver when you go out and do slow flight. You just have to pick two of them. After you've accomplished two of the scat safe maneuvers, don't forget to clean the aircraft up so you don't do something dumb like overspeed or over G gear and flaps. Common student errors are a bit of a mixed bag for slow flight, but generally they're more annoying than dangerous. For GK and setup, we've got the bog standard power setting and airspeed parameters. You can't not know those things. More specifically for setup, don't drone in level flight for forever waiting for your airspeed to decay. Similarly, get the winds aloft and study them prior to your flight. The wind is going to bully you at low airspeeds and you can get pushed into a corner if you're not paying attention. For execution, you will run out of rudder trim at some point, so you're going to have to dance on those pedals. You'll have to actively be adjusting power throughout these exercises in order to maintain your altitude. And don't be sloppy and accept deviations outside of CTS. Finally, if you're flying slow flight, you're probably in the early transition block, which means you probably haven't had a lot of practice cycling the gear, much less confirming it. Don't be the guy who over G's or over speeds his flaps without a damn good story to show for it. So that's all for now. And you might be asking, hey, Beefy, I thought you always replay the maneuvers at full speed at the end of the video. And you'd mostly be right, but we're creeping up on about 13 minutes now, which makes things less convenient to edit and render again if I make a mistake. So I'm going to follow up with a supplementary video, which you'll be able to find in this playlist in the future that's going to have all those maneuvers played at full speed. Uh, the end.